Hello everyone and welcome to another video from EGIS Associates, now a part of the Davy Resource Group. So the other day I got a message from somebody that was interested in getting an internal GIS group started and they were asking, you know, what is this ArcGIS thing? I see ArcGIS Pro, I see ArcMap, I see Arc Online. What is all this stuff? What do I need? I don't know. I, it's very confusing. And that got me to thinking that even though I work with ArcGIS all the time, it can be very confusing with all the pieces and parts that make up ArcGIS. So even for a, a experienced user, this can be confusing. So I thought, what the heck? Why not try to explain a little bit, at least on a high level, what ArcGIS is? So with that in mind, what is this thing called ArcGIS? Well, it's a series of solutions built by or created by uh, ESRI, ESRI, Environmental Science Research Institute or Systems Research Institute. Anyway, and it's more than one thing. And, and I think that's a hard concept for some folks to get because most of us tend to work with one part of this entire solution that is very broadly um, developed. I mean, ArcGIS is really a solution that's designed so that it can grow with you. So it can be as small as you need it. If you're a one-person GIS shop working in local government or a private company or a nonprofit or an educational institution, and it's just you by yourself, it can certainly be there to, to get you through and do what you need it to do. Uh, or if you're in a bigger uh, organization like me, now that we're part of the Davy Resource Group, we literally have hundreds of people that need to access and utilize GIS data and information. And our GIS is scalable to the point that it can do that and even go larger than that, really. I mean, you look at all the federal departments that are utilizing the ArcGIS platform, you know, the Department of Defense and Homeland Security and all that that are utilizing this. So they're literally serving things out to thousands to tens and thousands of users. And that's what ArcGIS is. It's really designed to be a scalable system that can be as small or as big as you need it to be. And it does that by having all of these different uh, applications and components and, and whatnot built in so that they all interact and talk to one another. So it makes it very easy as you grow. If you go from a one person shop where you're doing everything on your desktop to maybe suddenly you get up to where there's five or six or seven people that need to access data, then you can start implementing say ArcGIS online to share that information out. Uh, and then you grow bigger and you have multiple people editing data. You can get into to the enterprise and implement that. So that's really what ArcGIS is, is it's a scalable solution that's made up of all these components. So what I wanna do now is really talk about some of the, I guess the most commonly used parts of the ArcGIS uh, solution uh, platform and kind of what they do and where they fit into the, the process. So we'll start first with uh, ArcGIS desktop since I think that's what most people uh, first get exposed to when dealing with ArcGIS. Then we'll jump in uh, to the cloud and talk a little bit more about ArcGIS online. And then go from there and talk a little bit about um, the enterprise, ArcGIS enterprise and where that fits. And then I'll try to mention some of these other things like the mobile solutions with Collector and Survey123 and where they kind of fit in with some of these things as well. So we'll, we'll kind of keep on going from there. So we're going to start as I said, with the desktop. So ArcGIS desktop, right now we're in a state of flux at this point uh, with ArcGIS. Uh, the desktop is going through an evolution. We're migrating off of the older ArcGIS desktop, which included ArcMap and ArcCatalog into ArcGIS Pro. But regardless of whether you're using the older Arc desktop or, or the newer ArcGIS Pro, the purpose of Esri's desktop GIS, at least these, these solutions, is this is really for the GIS professional, the GIS technologist, you know, the person that really understands it. Because we use these tools and these applications to create all of our content. We're gonna create our maps. We're gonna 
edit our data, we're going to perform an uh, analysis, and then we're going to publish that out as either printed maps or web services or things of that nature. So this is the point of the desktop GIS as far as Esri is concerned. It's really for the true GIS person, the one that has the skills to, to really utilize uh, GIS to its fullest, right? So that's what we're going to do. So what's the differences between these two? Um, Y'all may have seen my other video that compares ArcGIS Pro to the old ArcGIS desktop. I'll try to remember to put a link somewhere up in one of the corners here. So if you haven't seen it, you can get to that. But let's take a, a little bit closer look. So the old ArcGIS desktop, when I say old, it's a lot of folks are still using it. it it's still pri the primary mainstay of desktop GIS for those that are working in the ArcGIS platform. Uh, this was first released in 1999, so it's built on that kind of architecture, uh, the COM architecture, so it's 32-bit. It actually consists of two applications, and this, I think, confuses a lot of people that you get ArcMap and Arc Catalog. These are two separate applications that are included with this. When you run the install, it installs both of these applications. You cannot buy one separate from the other. They, they come together. Uh, the current version is 10.8, uh, at least as of today, which is uh, April 9th, I believe. Um, that's the most current version. But Esri's really discontinued any new development on this platform. They're focusing it on the new one, uh, ArcGIS Pro. The only thing they're really doing, and the only thing they've really done for the last several releases is push uh, bug fixes, so any problems with the code, uh, as well as any security updates that need to go along. So as you can see, I'll go ahead and let's switch over and take a look at these two applications really quick, just so you can see them in action. Okay, so we're going to start here with Arc Catalog. So the purpose of Arc Catalog is really to help you manage your GIS data. So within Arc Catalog, we can get in and connect to folders that may have data in them. Uh, so I'll go in and navigate to, say, the my D drive here. So you can see I've got a bunch of different types of data. Uh, in here I've got shape files, there's some CAD files, there's an old coverage from uh, an older version of Esri software called ArcInfo. Uh, geodatabases are in here. So I can do things from here, like if I wanted to copy this uh, city limit feature class into another database, I can do that here. If I wanted to rename a shape file, I could do that here by right clicking and renaming. And the reason Esri developed a whole separate tool or application for managing GIS data is that some of these things are very complicated. For example, this shape file, if I look at it in standard Windows Explorer, and this was on yep, my D drive, GIS, and go down here to geocoding, right? So here's the geocoding shape file. You can see it's actually made up of several files. And the same with this shape file here. So all of these files work together to have a functional shape file, which is a storage format we use in GIS. Um, our catalog understands that all of these files, these individual files, are related to one another. So if I need to copy a shapefile from one folder to another, it knows automatically to grab all of these. If I rename a shapefile, it knows to rename all of these. Windows doesn't understand that, doesn't get it. So it doesn't know when you grab the SHP file here, which is kind of the core of the shapefile, then you know it doesn't know that I need to grab all the others, right? So that's why Esri um, created our catalog as a way to help manage those files because they can be very complex and very easy to break. The other nice purpose of our catalog is, it, is you get data in. A lot of times, especially now, we get data from different sources, from the web, uh, people email them to us and so on. Uh, we can get to know that data, right? We can find out what do we work with? You know, what does it look like? So I can preview the data. Right now I'm looking at this um, geocoding result shape file. So I can look at the geography, you can see all the points. I can also go down here and look at the table. So I can see the, the um, attributes that are associated with those points. 
if somebody's actually created the metadata for the shape file, which they probably haven't, but if they did, I could get in here and see, you know, why does this exist? How often is it updated? And those kind of things I can do here from catalog. So again, it allows me to manage data. And this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg of the things you can do here in our catalog. So now let's jump over in and take a look at ArcMap. Okay, so we're now here in ArcMap, as you can see. Uh, and this is where most GIS professionals, technologists, whatever you want to call us, uh, spend most of our time because this is where we're going to visualize our data, right? You can see here the zoning data, the parcel data, the natural water data uh, being displayed here. So we can visualize it here. Uh, we can also then go out and create our layouts. So this is where we would create our printed map and put in all of our title block information and scales and uh, north arrows and legends and things like that. For the most part, uh, this is also where we're going to come in and edit data. So we can you know, zoom in and if we want to split a polygon or create a new feature, we're going to do that here in ArcMap. This is also where we do our analysis. So we can get up here to geoprocessing tools, which are what our analysis tools are. So we can do buffers, you know, is something within a certain distance of something else, clip to extract data out, merge data together, and so forth and so on. So we can start doing a GIS analysis here in ArcMap. Uh, we can go into Arc Toolbox, which is part of ArcMap, as well as Arc Catalog for that matter. So we can do some of these things in uh, Arc Catalog if we want to. And so you can see just some of the basic tools here. So to extract data or look at overlay, how much of one layer overlaps another layer and so on. So we'll be able to do all of this inside of ArcMap. Um, as you can tell, ArcMap from the interface is much older. As I said, came out in 1999. So it leverages a 1999 interface. So it's a bunch of uh, various toolbars that get turned on depending on what you're trying to do in these windows. Uh, as I said, this is going away, right? It's going to be replaced with ArcGIS Pro. So let's talk about it for a second. So ArcGIS Pro, as I mentioned, is Esri's newest desktop application. It does basically the same thing that ArcMap and ArcCatalog does, just in a much more modern interface. You get that ribbon interface like you have in Word and Excel and AutoCAD and whatnot. Uh, I find it to be much more user friendly, especially to brand new users than the old art map and art catalog interface. So um, a lot of folks are, are beginning to make the, the switch. Now, it does require some beefier computer hardware to run. Uh, and again, I've, I've got a video um, that talks about that. Does your computer have enough horsepower to run this? But slowly people are migrating over to this new application from Esri. But again, it does pretty much everything that, that ArcMap and ArcCatalog does, plus a whole lot more. And this is where Esri is really focusing its development. So um, let's quickly jump in just to take a quick look at, at the uh, Arc Pro application as well. Okay, so we're now in, in Arc Pro. You can tell the interface is a good bit different. It's got the ribbons up here. Uh, the ribbon is smart. So as I select things like a layer over uh, here in the contents pane, this is the list of all the things that are in my map I'm looking at. Notice new tabs appear up here that deal with that. If I select the map itself, those go away. So it's, it's a fairly intuitive and smart interface compared to the toolbars that we have in the older Arc map. The other thing that Arc Pro does that Arc Map doesn't do is it supports both 2D maps and 3D scenes. So here you can see uh, a scene that is displaying the number of GISPs per state. So that's GIS certified professionals per state. And they're elevated based on the number that are, are there. So we can really see that. Uh, of course, we can still create layouts for printing and exporting to PDFs and all that. So all the same things that we did in Arc Map. So again, our analysis tools, uh, it has a version of our toolboxes as you see here. So there's the analysis toolbox we looked at in um, ArcMap. And go ahead and see if I can get this to resize. There we go. Got it to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So you can see all the various tools that are included in here. Again, extract, overlay tools and things. And there's some additional ones that are now in Arc. Pro that weren't in ArcMap, such as the pairwise overlay and um, 
some of the statistics uh, that are in here. So there you see ArcGIS Pro. So let's talk about ArcGIS Online next. So what is ArcGIS Online as opposed to the ArcGIS Desktop and ArcGIS Pro we were just talking about? Well, ArcGIS Online, as the name would imply, is Esri's cloud solution. It's hosted in their infrastructure via the internet, and it's considered something called software as a service. So it allows you to get up and share things via the internet. Um, this can be maps, it can be data, it can be applications that then others can access using the web, uh, mobile applications. So this is where Collector and Survey123 come in. Those are, are free mobile applications that Esri has created that allows you to connect to content via an Apple device, an Android or a Windows device without having to have um, uh, desktop software, right? So you can get in there. So Collector is used in conjunction with ArcGIS Online to, as the name would apply, go collect things. So you go out and collect street signs, perform inspections on stormwater structures, um, and so on. It, and it's a map-centric application, whereas Survey123 is, is somewhat similar, except it's form-centric. So Really, if you're going to go do, say, inspections, you'd probably use Survey123, whereas you're going to go collect new features like new power poles or water services or whatever, then you're going to use Collector. But that then feeds data back via the web uh, to your ArcGIS Online account. So let's take a quick look at ArcGIS Online and kind of give you an idea of how it works. Okay, so to access ArcGIS Online, you're going to open a web browser, uh, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Edge, Firefox, Safari, whatever you're using. And this is the nice thing about ArcGIS Online is that it doesn't matter what your operating system is. Whereas the Arc Desktop products, the ArcGIS Pro, ArcMap, Arc Catalog only run in Windows. Um, ArcGIS Online, because it's web-based, can be accessed from any, any device. So just go to my web browser, go to ArcGIS.com. Then I will go and click the sign in button. Um, I will sign in. So when I sign in, it then takes me into my ArcGIS Online account. Now, I'm an administrator for the EGIS Associate ArcGIS Online account. So I'm taken here to this page. It shows me the overview of how many credits I have, how many users, what licenses, and so on. So I can manage Arc Online. Uh, if you're not a administrator, uh, you're going to come in typically on the content page. So this is all the things that you have created in ArcGIS Online for various purposes. So you can see I've got a web map. I've got some hosted layers. So these are layers that are hosted out from Arc Online that are now accessible by things like Collector, Survey123, or other mapping applications. Okay. And let's see what else do we have um, in here. You can host shape files up here. Um, various other things that can be done um, through this. So let's take a look at some of this real quick. Trying to find a good one. So here's an example of a, a web mapping application. So I'm going to click this up and then view the actual application. So you can actually create web applications in ArcGIS Online using um, what they call Web App Builder. So this is a, a, a wizard driven kind of application builder. So you don't have to be a programmer. You can build web apps very quickly. So here's an example of one that I did for a concrete company that was considering implementing GIS to help with dispatching uh, trucks to deliver concrete from their various plants. So this is an app I can share out with them uh, and then they can put in an address. So, you know, whatever address that I want to put in, I can type in up here. Um, let me just use the old EGIS address. Uh, 
right? So here's the GIS address. And then that zooms in in this application. Then you can see based on the green hatch pattern, right? If I open the le legend, I can see the green col color that would be plant one. So if I needed concrete at this address, they would dispatch the track uh, truck from plant one, right? So this is all created and hosted up in ArcGIS Online. All the data is being pulled from ArcGIS Online. And again, so we can we can create all kinds of things through ArcGIS Online. Uh, here's a web map that was created. So we can generate these web maps and view them. All right, so here is uh, showing polls and who owns the poll in this web map. And again, no no GIS software is required because it's web-based. Anybody can get in here and see. Uh, again, I can choose who I share it with. Right now, I have it shared with everyone. That's the public. I can share it just with those in my organization. I can create groups in ArcGIS Online that can include people that work for me within my organization. So if you're in a city, only city staff members could access it or only members in a certain department could access it. Same with the county or whatnot. You can also invite others that are not in your organization to do that. So for example, I have a group down here called Tuskegee GIS Updates. That's shared with people in EGIS as well as the city of Tuskegee, Alabama. So as we help do updates to their GIS data, they can view it here as well because they don't have any GIS software, right? They can just view, make sure we're making the right changes, leave comments and things like that. So you can choose who you, you share it with. And then I can take this link and email it to somebody if they're in the list of people that it's shared with. I can also embed this in a website or create a web app. And this is where I was telling you about there's the web app builder that I can go through. Esri has a bunch of pre-configured web apps. I can also create dashboards based on that data that measure certain uh, metrics. Uh, how many work orders were done, how many polls were inspected, those kind of things can be all configured here, none of which requires any programming. Can you do custom programming? Yeah, if you know JavaScript, sure, you can create custom applications as well and reference this data because it's all coming from web apps. And the same data that I'm publishing here, if we go back into, say, uh, ArcGIS Pro, I'm back in Pro, let me close the geoprocessing pane. When I go over here to my portal, over here, this is that same content that I have available in ArcGIS Online. So there's that arcade test map. So I can also bring this in directly into desktop as well, right? So I can share it with people, whether they have web apps and so on, uh, or a web browser and those kind of things, and really expand the use of GIS beyond those that have specialized software, specialized skill sets. Uh, I can even take this out to the, the public um, as well. So I'll go back to my browser real quick here. Let's see, where is that? There we go, that's right. I'm going to go to a new tab. I'm going to search for the city of Peachtree City. So it's a city here in Atlanta, in the metro Atlanta, Georgia area, just down near the airport. So I'm going to go to their website. Um, if I go to services, oops, click too quickly, go to maps. Here you can see that they have an interactive zoning map that they've deployed. This is also coming from ARC Online. So they've embedded this map into their primary website. So now citizens can come in here and look up zoning for various parcels. And ARC GIS Online is facilitating that. Okay. So now let's go in and um, now that we've seen a little bit about ARC GIS Online, kind of get some rough ideas of what it does. Let's look at ARC GIS or talk about ARC GIS Enterprise. Okay, so what is ArcGIS Enterprise and how does it differ from ArcGIS Desktop with ArcMap and, and Arc Catalog and ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Online? So ArcGIS Enterprise is for any organization that really has multiple people that need to access, manipulate, edit, um, 
and whatnot, the GIS data. So when you start getting three, four, five more users that need to manipulate the data in your GIS, that's really when you need to start looking at getting ArcGIS Enterprise because it provides the tools and the solutions needed to allow for multiple access of the data from multiple locations. So with ArcGIS Enterprise, once you fully implement it, people can access the data uh, with all the desktop solutions. They can perform edits and whatnot. You can also deploy things like Collector and Survey123 so people can access it on their mobile devices outside of your office. You can deploy web applications that allow them to access, edit, and query data as well, both inside your firewall and potentially outside your firewall. So it really opens up uh, access and manipulation of your GIS data across your entire enterprise. And of course, there's also permissions controls and all these, so you can limit what some people can do. So for example, the planning office can be set up so only they're the only ones allowed to manipulate the zoning and land use, whereas the tax appraiser can, is the only one allowed to deal with parcels. Um, and the uh, utility superintendent is the only one that can, can update and make changes to the utility data, right? So you can configure all of that and allow certain access to certain members of your organization and even potentially those outside, depending on what you want to do. But the thing with ArcGIS Enterprise that is very different from, say, ArcGIS Online is this is going to be hosted on your own infrastructure. Now, it can still be virtual. It can be in the cloud, but it's your infrastructure as opposed to ArcGIS Online when Esri is providing the infrastructure for hosting that. Um, now, ArcGIS Enterprise is made up of multiple components. You've got server, you've got SDE and data stores, you've got portals, there's insights. There's a bunch of different parts and pieces. The three primary parts of this that are included with the, the core license is server, which allows you to take your, your data, your maps, and serve them out as web services. That means that you can then access them with things like um, potentially collector, web apps, and things of that nature. Then you have SDE or data stores. SDE is the older name, which uh, was stood for Spatial Database Engine. That's your multi-user access control. So that's usually connected to some sort of relational database like SQL Server or Oracle or that kind of thing. Um, and that's your centralized storage for all of your GIS data. So all your feature classes, your parcel data, your zoning data, your road data, and so on, is stored in that uh, component. And that's where you set up controlled access and allows for that multi-user. It also has tools to handle conflict. So if two people edit the same parcel, which one do you keep, right? Um, and that kind of thing. So again, that's where that multi-user connection comes in. And then portal, the other component is basically the same thing as ArcGIS Online, what we just looked at, but it's installed on your local machine or your local server, I should say. So all that same functionality we were just looking at is in Portal, but in the case of ArcGIS Enterprise, again, it's on your infrastructure. Um, so it mimics that. The other advantage to that is that you control when things get updated. That's one downside to Arc Online is that because it's Esri's cloud, they're going to be publishing updates, so implementing new versions and all that. They're going to do that, whether you want them to or not. Um, whereas with ArcGIS Enterprise, because it's on your infrastructure, you control when updates happen. So if you want to go from um, 10.5 to 10.8, that's up to you. Whereas with ArcGIS Online, Esri is going to automatically keep that up to the most current version. So that can be problematic because sometimes bugs get introduced or if you have customizations that can cause issues or whatnot. But I said RTIS uh, Enterprises all own your own environment. So that's kind of what ArcGIS uh, Enterprise is and really kind of goes through the major components of ArcGIS as a whole. So I hope that provides you with a much better understanding of what this whole ArcGIS thing is and the, the at least the primary components of it. There's a lot of different pieces and parts that we didn't get into because that could be a eight hour long video easily and don't want to do that. So with that, 
again, thank you for watching. I hope it's been helpful. You know, if you do need some help figuring all this stuff out, please feel free to, to reach out uh, to us. We can help you set up an enterprise GIS implementation, figure out which of all these components you need. We can integrate uh, GIS with other solutions, work order, permitting, uh, you name it, utility billing, so on. Uh, if you're trying to figure out, you know, really what parts of GIS do I need? Do I have to do it? How should I upgrade? What's my hardware like? Uh, we can do that. We can help you with a strategic plan or needs assessment. Maybe you need some help on a big project. You don't have uh, enough staff, but you don't need them for a long time. We can help you with our rent -a tech service to either do on-site or remote staffing there. And of course, we provide training and support. So if you got people, you want to learn how to go, uh, say, migrate to Arc Pro, and you need to learn how that works, we can give you the training support you need to, to do that. So feel free to contact us. Our website is www.egisassociates.com. You can feel free to give us a call at 678-710-9710 or email us at info at egisassociates.com. So with that, y'all have a great day. Please stay safe with all this uh, COVID-19 stuff going around. Uh, I know it's not easy. We're all kind of locked in, probably going stir crazy now, but uh, really your, your health is something that is extremely important and we hope that you stay safe and all of your family stay safe. And we'll look forward to seeing y'all in the next video.